Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. All right, welcome to the Inside Metal Show on T Radio V. I'm your host, Bob Nell Bandian, and my special guest, former Megadeth members, Chris Poland, guitarist Chris Poland. Hey, Bob. What's happening, Chris? We've known each other since the, uh, the, the old days. Yeah, since the be- <laughs> very beginning of Megadeth. I was at the first LA Megadeth show at the Waters Club with Exciter. That's how far I we go back. I remember that show. 1984, 83, 83. 83. That yeah, show that's right. rocked. Were you there too, Nick yep. Menza? Nick Menza. I was a fan. Oh, you were the roadie, right? Was, no, you were I drum roadie. I wasn't the oh, roadie yet. Not that. He, yeah. wasn't, he wasn't born yet. I was just a fan. <laughs> Nick Menza, of course, drummer who played in what uh, people consider the classic lineup of Megadeth, the Rust and Peace uh, era, is what they they called eighty nine through like ten years, so through like ninety nine or so, right? More than ten years. There you go. And of course, James Lomenzo, hey. bassist. And you played on the uh, United Abominations album and also Endgame, too, well right? Well put, well put. Both See, of I know my mega history. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, You guys were in Megadeth? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> so let's begin. Ah. Name of the band, Not Quite Yet. What's the that's name? That's a good name, Not Quite Yet. There you go. That's where, Actually, that's the name we should go with for a while. I like it. Not Quite <laughs> Not quite yet. And Not we're going to be yet. taking calls from you guys, the listeners, on our second segment coming up. But uh, before we take those calls, Everyone's asking, and I'm going to get this right out of the way, so nobody call in and ask, because I'm going to find out right now. Of course, you guys all know what's going on with Megadeth. A lot of speculation. Oh, about They're, him joining our band? About Dave Mustaine joining Not Yet. Yeah. No, no, not, not quite yet. yet. Not quite yet. <laughs> We're See, totally uh, going to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? No, a lot of people saying, you know, they might get back <laughs> Nick and Chris and possibly, you know, there's rumors about Marty. There's rumors. Gar. Have you been contacted? Him? Oh, <laughs> that's going to be a hard one to get back. Actually, well, Randy I, Rose. I channel Gar's ghost through me when I play. There you go. Just channels true. through me. I know. So nothing, uh, no, no, nothing you could say because we're going to end that right here and now. I, I know, I will say I know this. that there is a, a, a Facebook post that you said that you're saying you're. Oh yeah, dude, I'm open to whatever can happen. I mean, just be stupid not to be, but really, um, it's not up to me. All right, there you go. Question answered. So uh, let's talk. Um, let's talk. Uh, let's let's go back to early Megadeth. Of course, Chris Poland. You were in the band pretty much from the beginning. It was a three-piece, and then uh, you had joined, and you and Gar were in. Uh, now, I got to say, all you guys come from a jazz background, yeah. even we, you, James. Right? Well, I love jazz. Actually, mm. I'm more um, classical and classic rock. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we all, I mean, throughout the years. And I you know, know Nick. Nick comes, from, right. comes legitimately through it. Right. And, of course, uh, you and uh, uh, you know, Chris Poland and Gar Sanderson yeah. were I mean, in I several say, fu- you know, fusion jazz. Yeah, more fusion. Right, yeah. right. It counts. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I always loved about Megadeth and, and the musicians. I mean, always the top quality musicians, the best. And you've always had uh, that angle, that uh, jazz fusion. And I think when it comes to Megadeth, um, that's what really set the band apart from all the other thrash bands, the big four and so forth. And I think really that was the... Uh, uh, you know, when that first album came out, Dave did something totally different. I mean, not that Metallica and Slayer weren't, ju- but you know, Metallica got the major influence on the new wave of British heavy metal. You listen to Kill 'Em All, you hear, you know, all the influences from Diamond Head, from Weapon, from all these different bands. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is from that, this is that. Same with Slayer, you know, obvious Venom, a lot of Maiden influence, Priest. Uh, with Megadeth, it was just completely a new musical genre, mixing fusion with what they called speed metal at the time and it became the definitive thrash sound and i think everybody uh musicians and fans like always had that respect for even if they weren't into thrash metal music they always had the respect for the musicianships especially you know you three sitting right here you got to give it to chris for for being part of that early on absolutely Talk, talk about those early days oh god i can't remember (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no, some no, of the first shows the first you did the first major tour was with alice cooper right that was on the second on yeah the that, was great, that was a yeah. great tour yeah. long beach arena i remember seeing that yeah, we, we um that that tour broke the band i think right right but um yeah it was it was fun. now that's an odd bill people thinking now a band but you know back then there wasn't 
this genre of thrash or speed metal. It's, you know, back in the clubs, they would have, you know, Motley Crue and Metallica and, you know, Rat and Metallica. I mean, it was all, you know, you didn't have this separation. And so even with the big tours, Alice Cooper and Megadeth, that was just, you know. Well, we cool were playing tour. big places, and, and that record was those two first two records are really hard to come across in a huge room like that because we're playing mm -hmm. really fast and but it went over so right on yeah. mm -hmm. cool and nick you were originally a roadie for the band yes uh, when Ch <laughs> chuck beeler's roadie never forget where and I chuck beeler was actually gar samuelson's roadie correct yeah that's kind of the changing of the guards you know there it always it always happens that way you bring in the drum tech to take over the drum spot and he sits there for a while till he can't take it anymore and then becomes a drummer so that means well, if you were sean drover's drum tech you'd be back in megadeth now pretty I, much i, I mean. was a megadeth roadie <laughs> before i was in the band too were you really oh, were you i was really wow what, uh, who did you work for anybody specifically or the whole band the whole band up at the stone it's wow. kind of like navy seals you get in you have to be inducted king into yeah. the band. guitar you were carrie king's roadie i don't think so i think it was three piece it they were doing a three piece oh did they do okay yeah. and then carrie came on the second time they went up there right maybe i don't know yeah oh, i know wow. he was in the band for a minute yep yeah yeah. So what, when, uh, when did, uh, and speaking of Slayer, I want to ask a lot of people don't know you were gonna audition or you did audition for Slayer when the first time Dave I played Lombardo with them for like three weeks left. Yep. and that was pr you know before you joined Megadeth, just before. That right? was right after Rain and Blood came out. Wow, right around that time. <gasps> How and, did you uh, hook? The, did you know the Slayer guys? No, I got know? called. Somebody called me, and there was auditions down at SIR, and I went down there, and I actually got the audition, and then uh, started playing with them out at uh, Tom's house. Tom Arroyo's place out by the uh, Farmer John packing plant. I have to drive by there every day to get to his house. Yeah. I was nice like, smell. dude, this is nasty. Vernon, the city of Vernon. Over here. <laughs> but yeah, we jammed for like three weeks, and then I guess Lombardo came back, and uh, I was ousted. Yeah, but I didn't get paid any money, nothing. Just thanks, dude. Thanks for helping us out for a minute. <laughs> but you cool. got the Megadeth gig shortly after. Was it? Did that yeah. help in getting that gig? Nah, it didn't really have much to do with it. I was mm. like looking for a gig anyways. I auditioned for Slaughter. I auditioned for all these bands, wow. like Great White, you know. Really? And uh, just anything. I was just wanted to get a gig and be playing, and rather than working. Digging in the dirt, or you know, using a pickaxe, <laughs> right. loading a dumpster. Now you were in a band with our a producer of the Inside Metal movie, Joe Floyd, in the band Cold Fire, right after Warrior. You yep. did a few no shows kidding, with that, right? Man. Floyd's yeah. a good buddy of mine. He's we, a great guitarist. Done all man. kinds of stuff. Yeah, he's Joe's a great the best, player. man. Great, great writer. Producer. Yeah, Fighting for the Earth, classic. Album, we had some man. cool gigs. We did. Yeah. What happened there? Uh, they just kind of fell apart. The singer that we had was a little wild, mm. kind of a loose cannon guy. Yes. But he was a great singer and uh, just kind of fell apart. Then I ended up getting in Megadeth. And I actually had another band right before then. That Kelly I was Rhodes, right? Well, you I was in Rhodes, yeah. But yeah. then after Rhodes, we did this band called Von Skeletor that was, I played guitar and sang in it. That's right, with Gumby. And it was like punk, kind of punk thing. Yeah, Gumby yeah. was on guitar and right. a couple other buddies of mine were in it. And we actually, we wrote the whole album in one day, recorded it and did everything in one day. I so. think I actually saw that band. You guys played around here for <laughs> it a little bit. Funny. Yeah. It was awesome. a funny band. It was yeah. totally, we dressed up like skeletons and <laughs> yeah. totally yeah. like way before all that stuff started happening. And it was mostly just a fun band, you know. It wasn't really about anything else but having fun. Right, right. Well, since we're on talking old school, let's go to James. You were in, uh, you started with a White Lion in 84. As best part I of can the recall, yeah. big New York scene that was kind of, what was your impression of the L.A. scene going on at that time? And uh, Well, my first impression was um, I came out before I joined the band. Funny thing about White Lion is that, um, let me see. Before that, I was playing with a, a guy named Bobby Rondinelli who played drums in Rainbow. That's you know, right. right. And, uh, Bobby's a kill drummer. Ray Gillen was Ray Gillen in that was band. singing, yeah. Wow. So we had this. That must have been awesome. It was a great band. Um, my headphones are falling out there. But anyway, so I was doing that, and we used to play at the Club Lemoore. You guys know that place in Brooklyn, the rock capital of Brooklyn. Mm. And uh, I got friendly with everybody there. And so, you know, we finally played there a few times with uh, Rondinelli and Gillen and all that. And uh, so their managers beelined to me uh, and said, you, you got to join White Lion. You're the guy. Mm. And I said, well, they already got a guy. And he said, well, they don't really, you know, they don't want that guy. So I, I was like, okay, well, let me come down next Friday and see them. So I went to go see the show, and I remember watching them and thinking, this is exactly like Van Halen, only not as good. Right. You know? And I, <laughs> so I, I remember thinking to myself, like, no, nah, pass, thanks, guys. You know, yeah. no, thanks, but no thanks. So I moved to California. Now my impression of L.A., because I heard all the metal stuff was happening out there. I go to the Rainbow, okay, well, as you would. Mm -hmm. I go to the bar to get something to drink, and I see all these stovepipe 
black pants and these giant fucking black hairdo <laughs> piled up to there. And all of a sudden, I feel like I'm five foot seven inches tall, which I am. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah. I was like, uh, pardon me, can I get a drink? And I was like, what the, what planet, Amazonian planet have I landed on? But this is what everybody's doing, you know, with tall shoes and all that stuff. So I thought immediately, I kind of dismissed it. I thought, this is all just style. This ain't, you right, know, right. because New York, you know, we just, we get long winters, so we practice real hard, you know, <laughs> during those winters. So, um, so I hung out there and I started kind of joining with this band and that band, just kind of finding my way and stuff like that. I'll condense the story very quickly. Um, I, I became a motorcycle messenger, which I loved. Felt like oh, Paul, Paul cool. Revere riding all over the place, delivering packages and stuff like that. And sure enough, as all motorcyclists do, I met my fate. I ran into this car. Um, wasn't really my fault, big Lincoln Continental pulling out in front of me. Nonetheless, I was out of work and getting destitute. So um, I do the first thing anybody would do in that case uh, with my, uh, my uh, what do you call it, my crutch, I go to the Rainbow. And I'm sitting there and I happen to run into a friend of mine from Brooklyn and goes, hey, you remember that White Lion band? I go, yeah, yeah. He goes, they still are looking for a bass player. I bet they would fly you home to audition. And all I was thinking at that point was like, great, man, food in the fridge, go see my parents, you know, that whole thing. So um, that's basically what happened. I just took that ticket and went to go see what was going on and they were like, we're going to Germany next week to do a record. And I was like, never been to Germany? Okay. Yeah. Before I knew it, gold, platinum, blah, blah, blah. Was that with Michael was Wagner? That, no, uh, that was with mm -hmm. another producer. Mm -hmm. Then we ended up getting um, signed after that to Atlantic where we did the whole record. Okay. Oh, yeah, Grand Slam, right? That was with Brian Grand Scam. McElroy. No, Slam. Brian was okay, actually. Was that? Yeah. I, I said Brian, Grand Scam, but it wasn't. Oh. It was, uh, <laughs> no, he was fine. He was fine. White Lion had those want. pinky chords. Yes. That's right, yeah. 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 Vito Rado guys, Wars guitar right where you belong. Yeah. Did you guys play at the circuit in New York quite a bit? Or? Yeah, well, yeah. you know what? We, we played the tri states You, you, go you up, got signed pretty quick. We got signed thing. like that. It right. was lightning fast. It was crazy. But you know what? It was all demographic at that point. Because mm. we had the right look and we were playing the right kind of. Uh, I always thought it was like power pop metal. And plus, it wasn't, Mike Tram, wasn't he like oh. a big pop star in Denmark or something? Didn't as a matter. Kid? Didn't yeah. matter. Yeah. You know, it was just something to talk about in the press kit. Sure. But the point was, like, we got up and the music was certainly reasonable and we, you know, we played well and we just garnered this whole like uh east coast thing all right well listen we're gonna take a break here when we come back we're gonna take calls from the car callers and uh you could uh, call in here at uh, 855 trv well let me give you the numbers 855-878-4652 wow check this out this is actually the new super group doing Metallica's Motor Breath, and that is not James Hetfield singing. We're going to talk about this as soon as we come back from the break. We're going to play this through for about a minute. This is David Faustino, and you are watching T Radio V. Do you see what I'm saying? It's television crossed with radio. It's all together. It's weird. Radio's in the middle of it. I, it's amazing. You're watching it. Go. Love and marriage. Love and marriage. Hey, I'm Louis Lombardi. And I'm James Gutierrez. Bring you Celebrity Bookie every Thursday starting September 4th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Every NFL game picked by this man right here. Yep, you're make you rich. And fantasy stuff by me. Fantasy stuff by him. Fantasy football stuff. On where? On True Radio. I think that's TV radio. No, it's T, T <laughs> it's radio, T radio v. v. T Radio V on Radio dot com. TV. T Radio V dot com, I think, is what they want. Tune in. Radio and TV on the internet. It's the concept. It's the f bit. Join Dave Navarro and friends for Dark Matter, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on T Radio V. Right, Dave Navarro here, Dark Matter Radio, T Radio V dot com. The universe is vast, enormous, huge, full of stars, planets, and matter. Some of the matter is so dense that not even light escapes. <laughs> Get on the mic, get, get on the mic, get, get on the mic, get on the mic, get on the mic, Frank. Pardon me, sir, pardon my reach. <laughs> See, and you guys were worried. I think this is going great. <laughs> pardon my reach. Get the f away from me, dude. You are really beautiful. Thanks, you guys. 
beautiful. He's one of the most beautiful people I've ever known. This is pretty much every week. He brings in a guest that tells him how beautiful he is. Pardon my reach. If you have to reach over me, then don't do it. He is the straightest <laughs> gay guy I know. Dave Navarro signing off. Dark Matter. Thank Good you night. for listening. Bye. Dark Matter with Dave Navarro. Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on T Radio V. Drums. Do you, do you like drums? Drummers. Tell them about the show. Come on. Drum. Well, we like interviewing only the best drummers in the world on Drum Smack TV. Isn't the best. Right? The well, best. Only the best. The only the best. And then Brad. Brad. We interview Brad every week. But we actually <laughs> talk about drums and drumming and drummers. Check it out. It's an informal, interactive show that's all about drums, drummers, and drumming. Please check it out. It's pretty rad. Smacking. That's a good one. Smacking. That's the drum. Smack. That's smack a smack. Drum. Smack. Are we that's all smacking? Smack. Only on T-Radio V. Drum Smack TV. Watch it. It's funny and good and all that stuff. And smack. And Brad will be there, too. That's right. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. All right, T Radio V Inside Metal. I am your host, Bob Nelban, and with a former unnamed m- former members of Megadeth. Band right now. What we have names? <laughs> James, Nick, <laughs> and Chris. Nick Benson. But no band name. No, we're work, we're Still we're working diligently working. We're we quality really controlling care about it. A band name. It now, as matter. far as a singer name, that the track we just played, of course, Metallica's "Motor Breath." That was you guys playing it's, with a singer out of Russia. James and I, yeah, are on that, and then uh, Davor from Sofusia. Wow! And now is he uh, in, up for consideration for this? He's, Yet we've done some band. stuff with him. I, I don't really know. Everything's kind of up in the air right now, and like in a balloon. Mm. See, he's in around. Bulgaria, or is, uh, he's in Croatia, Croatia or somewhere. Croatia. Yeah. Is he come? Uh, is he so he still lives out there. He, you did. He says, did, "Take hold of the flames." <laughs> 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 did he do the uh, vocal tracks out there, and he just sent it yep, over? Or? Yep. Yeah, he wow. sends stuff. We send awesome stuff back stuff. and forth, and been collaborating. We did "Creeping Death" too, but uh, mm, I just I put up a little one. segment of it up on YouTube on my channel. If you check out my channel, Nick Menza on YouTube, subscribe. There you go. And Too we were going to have these guys jam, but Dr. Phil got upset. Dr. Phil's he, next door. He did. It's too loud. So and I, I was Dr. thinking, Phil. this week on Dr. <laughs> Phil, tinnitus. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what we are going to do is take some phone calls. I believe we might even have a caller on. Is it Dr. Phil? <laughs> it, it might be. Well, all right, let's I go. I like Dr. Phil. You're on the air with Nick, Chris, and James. Go ahead, caller. <laughs> hey, Stanley Rose. Oh, oh ringer. Shit. <laughs> God, what's going on, dude? You got a question? <laughs> yeah, I just want. I was, well, they kind of answered. That. I wondered if they found a singer yet because they haven't. Um, I'm in. I'm in. There you, you guys, go. You got I'm, a singer. I'm ready to go. Let's hear your scream. <laughs> Give us he, your actually best. Per- yeah, he actually, actually performed right on now. an album you did, Nick. He was wow. on the Marty Friedman Obsessed album, Obsession album. Oh, yeah, I was on that album. Uh, that Played a Stan did the vocal tracks on there, so there you go. Nick can Nick can pick out a singer okay. strictly from his high scream. I so. didn't even go. know there was vocals on that. When I played on it, there wasn't any I vocals. Think four songs had vocals. Ah, I have to go. check it out. You again. want to do your scream, James? Go ahead. Dude. No, I, uh, oh, I don't really earlier. feel like I don't feel like it too much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, do, do we have a, another caller on or? No, nah, nobody's calling. Uh, All right, Stan. Good talking to you, man. I'll, we'll right talk on, soon. Stan, we'll check you out. They're gonna check you out. Do we have another caller calling in? This is fun. Yes, go ahead, caller. You're on with Nick, Chris, and James. Are you there? Hey, this is Jason from Atlanta. How's it going, Bob? Hey, hey, hey. what's up, Jason? What's up? How are you, man? You have a question I'm for these guys. I'm pretty good. Yeah. Um, I'm still here waiting. I'm in my car. I was here with my friend who's like 20 years younger than me, and he's playing in a band. And I just wanted to say, especially to Chris, since... He was there in the beginnings of uh, the thrash scene. How effortless the good players of today have adapted those uh, the things that the thrash players did. Because the guys, when we were playing already, and then thrash hit the scene. You know, we had to kind of adapt and really figure out the speed 
and the intensity and the picking of a lot of the players. But today's players, they've just, like, the guys in my friend's band, Gunpowder Gray, they really, it's like second nature, you know. So you're, what you guys brought to the table early on really carried all this time and has done well. Oh, well, thanks, man. Mm. Yeah, as we talked and, about, it was definitely something unique that you had done. Did you know doing a recording killing is my business, especially coming from a jazz no, background, man. not really knowing this style of music, that it was going to be this? None new, of us knew. Yeah. He's know. always played that way, though. From what I've seen of him and heard of him, he's always had that style and that playing ability that shines through. No matter what he plays on, I know when he's playing on something, I can tell right. by his style of playing. Mm. All right. Well, uh, J- uh, Jason, thanks for the call, man. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Great talking to you, and thanks to all of you guys. You, I've seen all of you guys live, and you guys, your music means a lot to us, and it still does. So, and Thank I you. look forward to hearing the new band. Thanks, Thank you. Jason. Cool, Jason. Hey, Jason, keep your eye on the road, okay? <laughs> I think. <laughs> Speaking about jazz fusion, bar, you still got your project Ohm you're doing yeah, too, which is yeah. a fantastic uh, if great you guys band. Are into jazz fusion, just a killer, uh, great yeah, band. It's easy know. in that you know. I mean, for me, it's easy in that band because uh, I have Pag on bass and, and and Ginger Baker's son still playing. No, no, he okay. he actually moved to. Uh, just outside of Chicago, he bought a house out there. And did you see that documentary? Afraid oh, of Mr. Man. Baker, Can you dude. He's if that a was your dad. Nut. I know. Oh but man! Now I, know. I, I mean, I heard all these stories about him, but then after seeing this, like, man, it's all true. The it is, a man. Fucking he, threw a, he threw a can of peas at Kofi's head on Christmas Eve because he was <laughs> going to go to his wife's house. A for can a of peas. <laughs> yeah, it really hit him straight right in the forehead. Wow. He still got a scar there. <laughs> funny. Yeah, his dad's evil, man. Beware of Baker. Mm-hmm. That's all I can Beware say. Who's Baker. playing drums now? Uh, uh, David Eagle. Oh, Eagle's back. Oh, David, we got another caller. Wow. All right, caller, you are on the phone with James Nick. And Chris, go ahead. Hi, right, my question is for uh, James Lomenzo. Hey. Uh, who, hey, who currently makes your bass guitars right now? Are those a custom? Well, it those depends like on what you're looking at. Can bass. you see me? Can you see it on the TV? Are we, are we live stream? Yes, I can. Oh, this is great. Yeah, it's laying on the table. Uh, let's see. There you go. Got that? Do you, can you see that? Yeah, you're right on there. All right, yeah. this is a Win uh, bass. The company is Win. You can go online. A lovely guy named Randy Fulmer makes these things by hand, each and every one of them. It's a heavy bass. And, uh, and actually, it's pretty light for what it is. But um, anyway, I, I ran into it. I'm officially endorsed by Yamaha. Those basses are a little different than this. But, um, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. This is one that, um, that I really take to heart because uh, this guy, Randall, made it up for me special um, uh, based on... A, uh, wow. Uh, I feel like turn down your radio call. I'm getting confused. Listen to myself. It's like a porterhouse steak. It's like shape. a porterhouse steak. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was so made. If you got hungry, you could take a bite out of it. This was styled after a uh, John Entwistle uh, buzzard bass that oh, yeah. Warwick made that he used to play quite a lot. And uh, what Randy did was he kind of he cut it down and made it my size and made it much easier to play and a little more tone tonal. So um, check him out online, a great bass company. They're actually more affordable than you think. And, and uh, again, Randall Fulmer, is, uh, is, he's a great guy. All right. Well, Definitely, well, man. I appreciate your time. Sure. All right. Appreciate you calling. Thanks for calling in. Thank Once again, the phone number is uh, 855-878-4652. If you got a question for James, Nick, or Chris, go ahead and call in. And uh, in the meantime, we got some photos, right, uh, of uh, some of the early uh, Megadeth era. Uh, photos we could maybe throw up there. There's the oh, man, Gar, Gar Samuelson. Wow. Rad was, drummer. He's take, got his cut Yeah, that was my uh, my good tour. friend Bill Hale took those pictures. Yeah. He's like going, area. dude. Was, he put a book out <laughs> on that. Yeah, yeah, uh, that was book. the early days there. Dude. Yeah. yeah. There's the Chris Pole on the Oh, that's me. By, I, I uh, must have stole that shirt Bill. from Gar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the, again a Chris Pole in lineup there. Or the early days. You were a dangerous guy back then, dude. Oh, there's the uh, Megadeth ah. with James Lomenzo. <laughs> oh. And, of course, Glenn Drover and Sean Drover. The Drover brothers. The brothers. Was, yeah. What, yeah. 2006? Or 2006, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, see, I know. And there's the Nick Menza, the classic, our Mr. Marty Friedman with Dave Mustaine and David Ellison. We had bangs then. <laughs> <laughs> we were all and sexy in the 80s. No way to that countdown. Kit, yeah. He tried bringing that kitten here. Yeah, Actually, it, it didn't quite fit. Just a couple pieces of it. I thought we were going to do like a little acoustic jam. I come in and there's drums from hell all over the place and shit. Mm. 
they're <laughs> bitching at me, dude. Yeah, we, what's we were going gonna on? Jam. In the we were going to play live. And we were going to play go live. For for These guys were going to play live for you guys. But again, blame Dr. Phil. Call Dr. Phil. And yeah, call in and yeah. just yeah. ask Dr. him Phil. why he's in a bad mood and what he's been eating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, any other? Did we have another call? Caller coming? All right. If you want to call in, you know the number. Uh, once again, 855-878-4652. So uh, let's talk about this new project. You guys all obviously knew each other uh, from, uh, you know, uh, playing in Megadeth and probably from, from other uh, bands. Did this, was this something that you guys have been working on for a while? Because it, uh, you know, everyone laughs about it. It was funny how it kind of got announced the same time, around the same time, you know, Dave, had, uh, you, know, uh, you know, that uh, Chris Broderick and uh, uh, Sean Drover left Megadeth. Uh, but you guys have been actually working on this for a little while, correct? Yeah, these guys got it. together first. Mm. Maybe um, they could tell you how. Yeah, Nick was Nick was uh, scouting it. I've always been a giant fan of Nick's playing. You know, sure. especially in Megadeth because you know, Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. you listen to it; it's demonstrative, and you know, I got to kind of know him intimately, not having known him, just because we went through. You know, when I was in the band. How intimate? James? Well, uh, we, we went, went through a lot of old videotape and, <laughs> and old recordings. <laughs> yeah. Sat at the pool in yeah. Tan and. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I, and I know you got some video footage, some great video footage. I saw some great stuff from Dimebag Daryl yeah. from when you guys, when uh, Pantera opened for Megadeth. And, uh, Isn't today the 10th anniversary? It is. Yes, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Just passing on. That's right. That's right. Tell, why don't you tell us some stories about uh, uh, Dime then? I, I love the, uh, some of the footage you have. Yeah, we just in. we had a lot of fun with those guys. We toured with them in the States, and they toured with us again in Europe. And I'd go out and watch them play every night because they always – delivered the goods and mm. got the audience going and hard act to follow pantera mm, absolutely one thing that should be said about megadeth oh okay we got uh, we got two minutes remaining the two minute warning um you know so many bands have uh, uh, s- uh supported megadeth you guys took so many great bands on the road yeah. and so many bands that were not your typical like metal bands i know alice in chains went on the road with you uh, stone temple pilots corn's first tour you guys broke so many of you know, the grunge or the alternative or new metal bands. Um, I believe even Soundgarden toured with you. Is that correct? No, or, no? we didn't tour with Soundgarden. It was no, Stone Temple. Man. Yeah, okay. Stone but Temple, you, Alice in Chains. And I know even Ladder in your era, you know, like uh, bands like, uh, I don't know, was it was it Disturbed or um, Static uh, X? I know you Yeah, definitely we did a, a Giganto with Static X and... Um, uh, you, the so, point is, so many bands have, you guys really are a Megadeth, uh, had launched the go ahead Bob say it we're so old many bands. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I just think it's interesting because none we're of these bands guys. have really paid the respect <laughs> to uh, to Megadeth for really breaking the, breaking their career except for Alice in Chains and, and of course uh, Pantera but a lot of the grunge and alternative bands they never gave credit to the metal bands because no, we took it, all the bands we took out with yeah. us went on to do and, and when these things, ba- bands know. became huge they didn't do anything in return no, for you guys no they sure didn't yeah. we went forget those guys we're I mean Alice when we took them out they were getting booed and People were flipping them off. I remember like, the Clash of the Titans. Yep, yeah, that was the first time we took them out, and they were they went on to be huge. Sure, sure, and still are. Yep. Yeah, great guys. We might have Mike Inez coming on here real soon, actually. Cool. Mike's cool. So uh, James, what uh, what could you tell us about before we go into this break about uh, your years with Megadeth, which was uh, really. Um, well, I guess we're going to a break. We'll, we'll, we'll go to James when we come that's back. All that's, that's all he has to say about it. That's all he has to say James will come back, talk to him about the years he did with Megadeth. We might even be taking more calls if you want to call in. Call in. Uh, we'll be coming back in about two minutes. Hey, I'm Dean Kane, and you are watching T Radio V. I'm watching it, too. Right now. Seriously. <laughs> this is Quick Fix Radio. Quick Fix Radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check it out, y'all. We back in the building. What's yes, going on? Sir, what it do? We got some super guests, super special guests up in the place, in man. In the building, we got all five live in the building. Bone Thugs in the building. All everybody. Yeah, we live here. We up in here. Tonight, y'all. Not what's good. going on? Hey, man, I had, I had to come see what this TV radio one, y'all, what this all about. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> saying? <laughs> <laughs> we got game on the line. Game, what's going down, baby? What up? What up, man? What's going on? Oh man, we got EPO Dill. Who's this on the phone with us? Yo, what up, man? It's Akon. Oh, Akon in the building. Who is this on the line? Be real. We got oh, Be real. Be oh, real. Be real. Oh, Be real. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What is this we got on the line? This is Ty Dollar Sign right here. What up, Ty? Ty Dollar Sign in the building. Hey, thanks to all the fans for stopping by. The Quick Fix with Crazy Ball, right here on T Radio V. And it's uh, Mary Carey, of course, politically naughty with Mary Carey. I'm always naughty. I'm always politically. My behavior is always politically, politically naughty. naughty. I'm never politically correct. I'm Dr. Dr. Drew, hi. <laughs> oh, I'm so hey guys, how are you? It's all teary-eyed, doctor. I know. She wishes she could live at rehab. <laughs> but only if Dr. Drew's there. Obviously, sure. plus one, like, you know, because a little too groping might be inappropriate, but I like the flirting. Well, and stuff. When I, so when I, I walked in, know. you shoved my head in your <laughs> No! Are you going to sue me? <laughs> Get politically naughty with Mary Carey, Mondays at 4 p.m. on T-Radio V. Metal show on T Radio V. Go ahead, do some jamming there, James. <laughs> right on. I'm here with my guests James Lomenzo, Nick Menza, and Chris Poland, all former me- members of Megadeth. They got a brand new, yet unnamed band that uh, they are talking about here. Still and to be determined. That's a good name. There you go. That's right. So we're talking about uh, you. How you? Not, uh, we should let the listeners know you were obviously had a, a long stint with. Uh, Black Label from as early as the Pride of Glories, you and uh, Zach Yeah, Wild. me and Zach. Um, and I met Zach uh, in the 80s, uh, probably, I'm trying to think, 87. Um, uh, Ozzy was touring, White Lion was opening up, and we, we uh, me and Zach hit it off immediately. Mm-hmm. Thick as thieves. We got crazy on yeah. those tours. And so what the craziest thing we used to do, and that's what I love about these guys. You showered, though, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, no, Once in a not while. as often as you <laughs> as expect. We went English. Um, but these guys are a lot like Zach in that um, we could never get enough playing. So, mm-hmm. like, we would finish playing at the arenas, and then we'd go and find some club and politely grab the guitars out of everybody's hands and jam for the rest of the night. Right and on. basically then close down the place and do that the next night and the next night and the next night. Cool. So, uh, yeah, Pride and Glory was a great band with Brian Tishy on the drums. Uh, oh, that's right. Brian yeah, Tishy, White him. Snake, all those bands. Um, great drummer. Great drummer. Um, and then I just kind of stayed with Zach after that. We did another album, I think, of Book of Shadows. And uh, years and years later, I ended up moving down the street from Zach, and he comes by one morning. He says, come on, we're going to the studio. And I went, and before I knew it, there I was in Black Label Society. Wow. That's after I played with... David Lee Roth in like 2004, right? Oh, that's right. You did the David Lee Roth. Yeah, album, so that, that was that yeah. Like, did album. that? We wow. were on tour forever. We did all that stuff. stuff. Did you play with Ozzy one? Or did I you actually did... recorded on um, Osmosis and did background vocals on No More Tears stuff oh, like wow. that. Yeah, I was just hanging around all yeah, the time. Yeah. So they just get, they put me to work. This wow. guy's legendary. Yeah, yeah, yeah only legendary. nobody knows it. <laughs> <laughs> James Lament. So as, as far as getting in with uh, Megadeth, how did that happen? Well, that was an in, that was a fairly interesting story because after uh, Black Label Society, um, after I was done with that, I was kind of done. You know, yeah. I was done with because that was a that was rough to go out and it wasn't they just music. Yeah, it was yeah. no, oh, it wasn't even that. Drinking. It wasn't just music. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot of stuff. <laughs> but anyway, so I was like, I, I'm going to dry out. I'm done. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine from ESP, <laughs> Alan Steelgrave, you guys know. Well, anyway, he's, he's, he used to rep for them years ago. He's a friend of mine. He calls me up. He goes, uh, hey, I, I got a, a gig for you. Interested? I said, not really. He goes, yeah, but it's one of the big metal bands. I already knew like Metallica was fine. you know. Right. So I, I was like, so who? And he goes, well, just get me a package together. I said, well, who's it for? It's for uh, uh, Megadeth. He goes, I can't tell you. I said, all right. So I get a package together for Megadeth. And then what? He goes, yeah, shut up. <laughs> so I sent him a, a thing. And then Dave called me a couple of days later and said, hey, I like what I heard. Come on down. Awesome. And that was, that was really it. And then 20... Three days later, we were in Dubai, first gig. Wow. Plus, was, he had cool hair. And I had cool hair. Brad hair. Yeah. And a cool beard, but you had to shave it then. Right? I had to shave the beard. I had to shave yeah. the beard. That was the I'm not saying anybody shave. told me to do it. I'm just saying <laughs> that it had to come off. Right, right. That's what we always boycott. <laughs> when we go to Europe, we don't shave because you don't shave in third world countries. There you go. 
So uh, did you go right in and uh, after those shows do United United Abomination? Yeah, United Abomination was right after yeah. Dubai and a few other shows, and uh, I think we played in Spain before that, and then uh, we went out to. Uh, a studio in Redding that uh, the guy from the Buggles oh, got wow. his name used to Redding, own. California, huh? No, no, Redding, England. Oh, out okay. In the, out in the woods. And that was great. And wow. we just, you know, that was like trial by fire because I was sitting in the middle of this trying to figure out A, what this music was and B, you know, what was being written. And Video killed the radio star. Yeah, but it was a very cool studio. The <laughs> studio actually was owned by uh, uh, a guitar player from Pink Floyd. What's his name? Uh, David Gilmore. 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 Right. Wow. It used to be owned by him, then he sold it to this guy, but it was haunted. So we stayed in this. Really? Yeah, the, the house itself was That's a mansion, awesome. and so we stayed up all night looking for ghosts. And, Did you, you find know, any? We made more ghosts than we than we oh. found. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> now another thing people don't know: you just recently got the road with John Fogerty. Yeah, that, I just I just came back last week. That's uh, awesome, man. dude! It's beyond awesome. Wow. A funny thing about that is when I was uh, probably about 11 years old, I used to strum strum guitar and sure. had a pretty good voice and stuff like that. And my uncle worked for Billboard, so uh, he used to bring home all this sheet music, and right. that was the music of the day. I'm old, you know. So um, there was all those uh, Creedence songs, and so that's what I used to do. But I had the bowl cut and everything, dude. Wow. I actually showed him a picture recently. That was me. I was like a little you, the denim jacket and all that that's stuff. That's pretty cool. So yeah. you still working with? Uh, are you still going to go? Oh the yeah, 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 him? man. I'm, I'm his as long as he wants me. I mean, that's. that's awesome. You know, you don't get too many legends you get to play with. So right on. Back to you, Mr. Poland. So what, uh, talk about some of the other stuff you've been doing uh, uh, since Megadeth. You had Damn the Machine, which was a great band. Yeah, that, back I, in, uh, that was a great band with my brother records. Mark. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, what I'm doing now, uh, I sometimes I go to Chicago and do like a jazz thing, mm. and I kind of you know do what I can in it. You know, they're doing standards, and I kind of fake my way around it but it's fun though right right it's uh, G uh jimmy chamberlain's playing drums this time so oh, it nice. should be a little heavier on uh, that's dennis's son no no it's uh oh. the drummer from the smashing pumpkin oh okay yeah, yeah. i think that's it's will right. chamberlain's son <laughs> yeah yeah it's will so. i think of dennis chambers okay yeah. i think no but it's, it's, I, it's I got this guitar coming out um <laughs> this coming nam it's a uh, oh yeah why don't you show hold it up yeah. to the camera dude yeah. it's the poltergeist nice it's um it's a old Gibson scale. It's got a, a really nice flat neck. It's got this chunk of granite where the 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 steel block normally goes. Right. It's a real nice sounding guitar. And you, Nick Menza, have got your own signature symbol there, mm -hmm. right? If you could. Can you uh, see that? Uh, you might have to hold it up there. You got to tell them about that symbol, man. Yeah. Show the symbol. Yeah. You can see the. We're talking gear here. Yeah, there gear you go. There's not great Heavy lighting gear. in here, but usually in the lighting, you can see it. It reflects oh, you can the see. light. Oh, we actually got a call coming in. So yeah. you want to? We'll take uh, we'll take another call or two. <laughs> Caller, you're on the air with Nick James and Chris Poland. Go ahead. Hi, how you doing, Chris? Nick, I'm Chris. How are hey. you? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, man? Hi, it's Jimmy from Scotland. Right it's Jimmy on. from it's Scotland. Scottish, it's crap. <laughs> Aye. What Aye. do you got to say, I've Jimmy? Sat and had a drink with I've had and sat, sat and had a drink with Chris uh, Lorenzo in Glasgow. With me? And the Judas Priest tour. Awesome. Oh, that's possible. I met a Nick. I met Nick Menzo in 1988 at the Bradford uh, Queens Hall on his very first gig. Thank you. Oh, wow. I don't remember you, but if you say so, gig. I believe you. That's cool. <laughs> no, you won't remember me. It was 1988. So far, so good. So what? Oh, yeah, that wasn't me then. I was drum tech. <laughs> ah, he was tech in there. That was your first gig. Yeah, no, that wasn't my first gig. <laughs> that was my first gig as a roadie. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? When are we going to hear some of your new stuff? Soon. We were going to play today, but Dr. Phil put an end to that. <laughs> Oh, that's I don't think they know. Dr. I mean, we Phil literally had all our gear and it was set up. We were ready to go, and they said, "No, guys." Yeah, you there's can't a play. studio next door, and they talk about warts and stuff like that, and they thought this might clash. <laughs> 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 Did someone touch you when you were you a child? Guys, yeah. <laughs> Not as often as I would have liked. Yeah. Do what you do best. That's what we came that's to do. That's all we're gonna do. All right, Jimmy. I appreciate you calling in from Scotland. Very cool. All talk the way from Scotland, all the way, and I hope to see you soon. We're going to be there. All right. So we'll talk about the new music. Now, I know it's been kind of described. You, you miss, A lot of people might think it's going to be like Megadeth, thrash metal, but you're taking a lot of classic rock influence. A lot. I, I heard it described as Led Zeppelin meets Metallica. Is that uh, kind of accurate, or how would you... Uh, it's got some elements say. of that, but I'd say we're just so far beyond everything that's been heard already that... Mm. 
it's going to be a conglomerate of styles and uh it's going to be what we like to do the best have fun mm. play have you written uh, a lot of new music no i know you've done, been doing covers we just played that uh, cover of the metallica song we've been earlier doing that was just before any but right. we really even came together you know james came in and did the bass on it and then uh we weren't hooked up with chris yet um I'd say that was just a pre-stage kind of like keeping us busy doing stuff. And um, our material is going to be really out there. It's going to be different. It's going to be pumped. It's going to be heavy. But uh, it's going to be us. So how are you releasing this? A lot of bands are just putting out singles now. Are you, gonna, are you waiting to, to put together a full album and uh, come out and then yeah, do we'll some shows? Have, or do we're going to definitely have a, a bunch of material to work with right now we're just cycling around a bunch of riffs that we have and, and seeing what's sticking and what's not and then we'll take it to the next level and look for a singer and no, possibly I james might sing i might sing I, we don't know cool. what's going to happen all right we're yeah, really so. l lucky to to be doing it with at nick's place man because nick's like a really good engineer so we can capture all the ideas as soon as they happen it's, right. it's really amazing mm -hmm. so you're recording we, everything right oh yeah i that's record awesome. every day anyways no matter what i'm doing it's just my hobby that's killer i'm that's into cool. it very cool always so. been into it all right can you talk to about any singers that you might uh well we like bono you know but he yeah. was kind of he busy. got hurt he just broke yeah. his collarbone so he's, he's out for yeah, a while so yeah yeah, yeah. No, we're actually we're not interested in in sing, singers right now because we're still developing this core. Sure. And it's just easier for us and more efficient. And I, I just think we're still feeling each other as musicians, you know, as as a group to see where we're going direction wise. Right. We're bringing that other element right now. I think it might turn things on its side and slow things down a little. Very cool. All right. Well, cool. cool. We're multi-dimensional. Yeah. So and this plus uh, these two guys both sing good. So yeah, yeah we're, we're gonna give that go. a shot too. Very cool. All right. So what about, uh, so sh you can do any shows beforehand or probably uh, uh, not to the record This was our first release. show today. Yeah, yeah we're well, already. We got <laughs> shut down at the sound check. Yeah. This isn't working we'll, we'll, very well, guys. We'll go do a little jam <laughs> outside after the show. We've got about a minute left uh, before this uh, segment ends. So uh, what else can you tell us about this band that uh, you want the listeners to know? Well since you don't have a name, since you don't have a singer. This is, I mean, you know. this is a really early stage. And I mean, yeah. the exciting thing about it is like, We've we're played seeing... played together, what, three times? Yeah, we're, we're seeing this thing grow. When, when Chris finally came on, you know, it was just kind of like, you know, we just kind of hit the pedal to the metal, and that's what we're doing right now. That's, that's where we're awesome. at. So this thing is coming, and it's, you know, it's, I'm, I'm impressed. I really am, because, I mean, I've been a fan of both these guys forever. Sure. And it's not just mutual ad admiration. I think we have a language musically. Right, and yeah. I'm honored to have There's you guys chemistry. on as the, the very first uh, public appearance. Right on, man. man. So we're going to take uh, one last break, it looks like. And then we're going to go jam at Bob's back house. And, uh, we'll, yeah, there you go. We'll, 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 I, I don't care. My, I, I don't care what my landlord thinks. I'm out of there in a couple Bob's months gonna anyway. Bob's going to be sleeping here for now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to come back with James, Nick, and Chris. Hi, I'm Moby, and you're watching T-Radio V. What it do is your man Money B from Digital Underground asking everybody to check out the Going Way Back show, your home for classic hip-hop, raw and uncut. Join me. And me, DJ Always. As well as Ty Teasy bringing you the old school new news every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on T-Radio V. That's right, Radio MTV. <laughs> <laughs> T Radio V. I found the greatest invention this week. It's a bed that's made for cuddling. It's called the Cuddle Mattress. And look, you can slot your elbow in. <laughs> oh, my. and what about yeah. the remote? That's my biggest concern. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you would seriously. I already lose my remote and I have a normal bed and it gets like caught in my blanket. Yeah. <laughs> you shag in one, and then when you get it all like wet and messy, you sleep in the <laughs> other. And that's kind of what you need in life. You need like a bed to shag in and a bed to sleep in. It's the Suicide Girls, Thursday, 6 p.m. on T Radio V. I'm Zoe Williams. And I'm Dr. Mark Goulston. I'm Jeff Brown. And we make up the Zoe Web Morning Show. You can find us here on TRadioV.com every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I make you think. He makes you laugh. And if I get a chance, I'll help you change. Or make you cry with his attempts at humor. Radio in TV. Can you relate? We'll make it happen. Look at Jeff. What you doing? Were you mumbling to yourself? <laughs> he no. back there mumbling. To them. To them. 
Hi, this is Slim Jim Phantom, and you got the big beat. We're gonna take this music into the 22nd century. We deal exclusively in rockabilly music. Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Richie Valens, Wanda Jackson, Janice Martin, the Everly Brothers, Johnny Cash, and everybody else. Thank you so much for supporting the Big Beat here on T Radio V. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. All right, you are back here at T Radio V, the Inside Metal Show, with your host Bob Nelbandian and former Megadeth members Chris Poland, Nick Menza, and James Lamenzo. On our final segment, we're going to take a, maybe one or two more calls before ending this. You could call 855 878 4652. You could also Skype us at uh, T Radio V L A. And uh, uh, what is that? Twitter at T Radio V. So um, lastly, uh, Nick, man, uh, what uh, you you were doing some work. uh, You had had quite a few bands since um, that our projects you were doing Mm -hmm. since Megadeth. I know you were doing some projects with uh, Max Norman and Mm -hmm. uh, quite a few other stuff. Uh, You want to talk a little bit about that? You you mentioned that you have some recordings that were done back uh, from the uh, 90s. Uh, that you might put out. Yeah, possibly. Uh, Anthony Gallo and myself were doing the Chotel's Trunk uh, band, and uh, those songs are pretty cool. You heard them. You came by my house that time, and I played them for you. Yeah, nice. I've got my hand in all kinds of stuff, different projects and producing stuff, engineering, whatever I can, really. Anything having to do with music I like to be a part of. doesn't really matter what it is, so long as it's not country or... You know, I have a right. heavy metal, uh, death metal gospel band that I'm starting. <laughs> nice. S- speaking of country, how how was it working with Dan Huff on that? Uh, Dan's album? cool. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah great producer. Cryptic, uh, cryptic writings. Yep, great it was a album. great studio. We were in Master Phonics. Oh, well, it looks like we got a call. Caller, you are on with Nick James and Chris Poland. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, am I asking the questions now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this would be a good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'm. I'm. Oh, okay. I'm. I'm watching the uh, chat. I guess it's a few minutes behind. Uh. Uh, I. I haven't really. Uh, not any specific questions about Megadeth or your group. I just whenever I could get a chance to ask musician stuff. Uh, did you guys play any previous instruments before you kind of uh, got to the instruments you play now mainly? Sure. I played guitar, trumpet, sax, fallopian tuba, piano, <laughs> you know, whatever I could get my hands on, really. Oh, that's cool. Piano. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm just out of curiosity because it's always cool to know some yeah, of my I, favorite musicians that you guys are have other talent and stuff. Yeah, I played French horn. Um, almost almost took me through college had I not decided to do this. <laughs> <laughs> French horn is hard. That's why I picked it. Teacher said, this is the hardest instrument in the uh, thing. Yeah, 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 and I was it's feeling it. my oats at 12, so I said, I'll do it. That's violin. <laughs> yeah. Music's a yeah, hobby. Yeah, I played euphonium. <laughs> but you know what, dude? I, I got to tell play. you. I got to tell you, man. You can't, you can't listen to or play enough different kinds of music or different kinds of instruments because uh, something will always give you uh, some kind of inspiration that you hadn't considered. So I'm, I'm a big proponent oh. of that. Like, listen to music. Even if you hate some kind of music, just sit down and make yourself listen to it and see if anything happens. Good answer. Oh, yeah. I always found great bass lines just from listening to R&B and stuff like that. Even if it's music I don't like, oh, man, there's some good ones. Without a doubt, man. Anyway, I just yeah, anyway, I just want to ask a real quick question. Thank you for having me. Happy Thank you for Vegas. calling. Hopefully, Appreciate you guys come by in Vegas. I will definitely go. Right on. There you hey, go. Hey, man, forget Dr. Phil. we got to get Dr. James. That's <laughs> right. Come <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> sit with talking me. Talking about. So how do you feel when you play music, James? <laughs> I feel ill. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good kind of ill. So let's go back to the early days of Thrash, Mr. Poland. You are featured in our upcoming documentary on the early days of L.A. Thrash Metal, The Rise of L.A. Thrash Metal, and uh, you were a huge part whether you – Admitted or not oh, no. to the... Um, I got to tell you, we played... Um, early thrash scene. Lemours. Mm. Okay, it was my first gig. 
and I'm standing behind two hole stacks, and they're playing um, Am I Evil? Uh -huh. And I've never seen this audience ever. Just through the loudspeakers. Yeah, oh, yeah. and I'm looking out there, and I was like, man, these people are crazy. <laughs> and that was my first experience, and we were, we were opening for Slayer. So it was a pretty radical show. And I think you talk about this on our little clip. We're going to take a caller after we play the uh, uh, trailer to the uh, Rise of L.A. Thrash Metal that features Mr. Chris Poland. It's on the early days of the L.A. Thrash Metal scene. Sweet. <laughs> Beyond Slayer, Metallica, and Dark Angel. That is so thrash. That is so over the top. The most extreme music I've ever heard. We were all hanging out together. We were all united around the belief in this music, and, and it brought us together. San Francisco gets talked about all the time, but LA had a fierce metal scene. But man, we had to fight the good fight against of most of what LA stood for. LA did not get the credit. It was stolen from San Francisco. They, they took all the credit. All these bands started emerging who were following in the footsteps of the new wave of British heavy metal. And it, it was just blood. <laughs> it was just brutal blood, man. Just fights and just. There was no control. Right. There was no control. The danger was part of the excitement. Came out the poser and set him on fire and tied him to the chair and beat him up. I watched them do stuff like that. And I've got the biggest band in San Francisco opening for you. We're like, why in tea? He's like, no, Metallica. I'm like, who? Good grief. You know, Metallica's much bigger than Diamond had ever were. So we got a copy of No Life to Lever, put it on, it was like... Metallica was the first time I heard the punk element plus the new wave of British heavy metal put together. I'm like, this is it. I loved it. Said, well, we're going to headline LA. That's our hometown. But we're going to headline. And Metallica going before us. Well, that was a big mistake. Because then they came on and just destroyed us. We went on Reggie for Metallica, and there's still like that thread. There's no way we're gonna blow away Metallica or anything, but I mean, we're gonna fucking try. Come with me, open for Queens, right? People really had no idea who we were. I mean, this is a big arena, and I remember looking at an audience and people having this look of terror. And the whole place was, like, the ceiling was sweating. Damn, yeah, that's Rockstar shit. Get yeah, up fucking roadies, you know? We got all the metal guys on one side of the parking lot and you got all the punkers on the other side, and the animosity's already started. All right, there you go. That is the trailer for our third title, the third L.A., uh, or I should say uh, Inside Metal title called Rise of L.A. Thrash Metal uh, Features. Mr. Chris Poland here. Uh, before we get into that, I believe we got a caller on hold. Let's go ahead, take our final caller of the uh, afternoon. Caller, you are on the air with uh, Chris, James, and Nick Menza. Go ahead. Uh, hey, what's going on, guys? Um, I just, uh, I guess I had a question, especially like uh, for Chris, just uh, wondering, like, I guess like in the, the early, uh, earlier days or your early days of like Megadeth, like, I guess like, what was sort of the more, uh, some of the more like difficult points or like if there was a specific time and you kind of realized like what you were a part of, you know, in the, the sort of early years in the earlier albums? Uh, do you mean musically or, or, um, just trying to deal with it? Spiritually? Come to Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I guess as, as um, just being a part of that band, like, was there a point you kind of realized, like, you know, because I guess in hindsight now, like, how important those albums are and how important, no, I would say, you know, Megan uh, Yeah, I was is. saying like, before. You, was there a point where you kind of were aware of that? No, no. I, di I didn't think um, right up until uh, the point where I left the band was when I, you know, I knew it, it was going to take off, but it was just wasn't meant to be for me, you know. But uh, in the beginning stages, nobody knew. We were just trying to, you know, get out there and do it. 
It was all about for the love and the passion. It wasn't yeah, about yeah, money yeah. or chicks or fame. I mean, you just it was oh no, it was, metal. It, was it, about it was about being all that the too. Loudest, <laughs> fastest, heaviest man. <laughs> no, no, it was totally, about I'm chicks. Like, no, speak but, for yourself. Man. Yeah, no, but the thing was, is um, we were we were you know doing our best to to play that material as good as we can you know we could, and and some nights you know we got thrown off a Motorhead tour because we started to like actually get there. And we, we did four shows with them, and uh, the morning of the fifth show, they said, you're gone. Really? Yeah, because wow. we were just pounding. I, I think metal is one of the more competitive uh, genres of music, definitely. Everybody's competing to blow everybody else away, True. and that's really well, that's what, what keeps about. You, you know, you guys as musicians... Uh, you know, working harder and striving harder and harder, which is, it's, it's good, co it's healthy competition. I like the competition. Yeah. It's like yeah. under the pressure cooker, you know, get in there, let's go. The sure. cool thing about the, the the metal scene that we were in is that the audience drives the band mm. and and it just, the energy starts right from the beginning. By the end of the show, man, it's just mayhem. Yeah, and right. and that's, th there's there's a lot of good energy there, even though it's angry, you know, Fighting. Fighting and whatever, but it's energy. Well, gentlemen, I think the show is just about over. Any last words? Anything we still have a few minutes. We can get our instruments out if you want to hear something. Yeah. <laughs> we can do it. Right. They can, can throw us out now because we're, we're going to play. Yeah, we're done. We could set up. Nah. All right, listen, we're going to be time. at Hollywood Park. <laughs> on the grass, we're gonna set up our gear. We're gonna plug in these electricity. I feel bad. There. They brought all this gear over, here and I'm like, and you know, eh, ah, it's not gonna work. It'll happen next time. All right. Dr. Well, you know Phil what? We're working no. really hard right now. We're gonna get this band off the ground. And it's gonna kick ass, and that's why we came here to say hello. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for everyone for calling in. Yeah. Inside Metal on T Radio V. You could get catch these guys. What's your website address, real quick, before we go out? You got a uh, YouTube. Nick Men's on YouTube. Check me out. My channel. There you go. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. You are watching T Radio V, Radio and TV.